Hey traders, Jason here from Lever Brothers. It's time to do an update on my State of the Market series. It's been a while, uh, and with some things I see developing, this seems like a good time. Uh, before I get started, quick reminder, I put together a mini masterclass in trading. It covers a lot of the stuff I wish I would have known when I was starting. So it's great for beginners, and it's also really helpful for advanced traders who need a little reminder of some, some key concept. Um, I bet you some thing, there are some things in there that you haven't been exposed to. Uh, check it out at the link below. It's free. All right, so let's get to it. Um, the market's doing well. The NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100, S&P 500, S&P 100 all hit new highs last week. Apple is now a $2 trillion company. Tesla has, has gone vertical since announcing a stock split. Many other stocks have done incredibly well, but we're starting to see some evidence breath is weakening. Uh, more and more stocks are left behind, so we have a situation where less companies are accounting for pretty much all the gains. All right, so let's, uh, let's check out the charts. First, we're gonna look at some indexes, and then we're gonna look at some breadth indicators. All right, so here is the NASDAQ, okay? It looks really, really good, okay? It's been channeling up since the March lows. This was the all-time high, so obviously we made an all-time high back in June, and we've continued to make uh, many, many more all-time highs. Uh, the MACD is hovering you know, well above zero. Um, this is the definition of a trend. This is characteristic of a trend. When the market trends up, you see the MACD basically rotate up and down at a relatively high level. Um, you can ignore crosses and stuff. This is characteristic of an uptrend. Looking at the stochastic, we had a, you know, trend line breaks work really well with the stochastic. Uh, so you have, you know, we had a trend line break here, but after a few days it recovered and got back above 80. And now we're, uh, you know, now we're up there. So this is characteristic of an uptrend too. So the price chart looks great, trending up higher highs, higher lows within an uptrending channel, above all key moving averages. MACD sitting at a high level, stochastic at a high level. Everything looks incredibly good per this chart. All right, here are here's a small cap chart. Okay, it doesn't look that bad. Okay, you can actually make a case that like. You know, you can draw a channel line here and a channel line here, and you can make a case that it's also channeling up. We had this little move here and back down, but ignoring that, it's also channeling up, albeit, um, you know, the all-time high is over here, so, you know, we have a big gap over here. Um, but the price chart isn't that bad. It is channeling up. Most of the move, you know, the the the, the, the shorter term intermediate term moving averages are moving are trending up so it doesn't look too bad if we look at the MACD here's where things start to fall apart instead of where the NASDAQ um, the MACD sat you know up here you know just kind of rotated up and down we have a situation here where it rotated all the way down to zero okay then it it climbed and now it's uh, you know now it's now it has formed a lower high so if I get rid of this we have you know, a big divergence that's forming here. Um, and now it's just crossed down and is, is now trending down. With the stochastic, again, uh, trend line breaks are pretty are pretty powerful. Um, so we had one last week where we took out 80, which is a key level plus the previous low, and it's trending down with some force right now. Okay, so the price chart doesn't look too bad, but, but with the MACD rolling over from a lower level, the stochastic having crossed way over here and now falling pretty fast, the small caps are in trouble in, uh, you know, in the near term. This has been the case for most of the last four or five months. NASDAQ doing really well, thanks to many tech stocks doing really well. Small caps, which have oil and financials and stuff like that, have not done very well at all. Okay, So far, it hasn't mattered. Will it matter? I don't know. Okay, I'm just going to say no, it doesn't matter, because even if the market falls right now and the bears jump up and say, see, I told you so, well, it didn't matter for like five months, so why, you know, if the market falls, it's not because of this, um, but I still want to bring it to your attention. All right, so now let's look at um, some of the internals, see what's going on beneath the surface. All right, so here we have <clears throat> SP 500 up top, and we have the 10-day moving average of the advanced decline line and the 50-day moving average of the advanced decline line. What you first let's talk about the relationship between these two. Okay, what you get is you get expansion and then contraction, expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. And as long as that takes place, and this is the 10 day, 
Okay, so this is the normal even flow of the market. As long as this takes place, while this takes place, as long as the 50 day stays above zero, then what happens up here with the 10 day just talks about the very near term, but as what the what happens with the 50 is it tells you that the long term is you know remains in good in good shape. So any type of any type of drop over here should be considered just a drop within an uptrend, as long as as long as what takes place over here, um, as long as we don't get a drop below zero over here. Okay. So another thing to look for. Um, Divergences are pretty powerful. Okay, so you get like lower highs here and higher, higher, uh, higher highs here, and it tends to uh, tends to lead to a, a short-term pullback. Okay, these kind of divergences happen. You know, it's, they seem to happen every couple months. Okay, and they're they're pretty much all over the place, and you tend to get you know shorter-term pullbacks that last a couple weeks, maybe a month, sometimes just a week. Um, but you really don't want to put too much stock in the 10-day, and unless the 50 completely turns uh, rolls over. So what we have currently is we have a divergence that formed within the last couple of weeks. We have matched highs there, but we have higher high from the index here, but matched highs down there. And now we have a drop uh, below zero, which is incredible because if you consider that the S&P has just been kind of pushing up, pushing up, pushing up, making new highs, made, made, a several, made several new highs last week, yet over the last 10 days, decliners have actually outnumbered advancers. Okay, so there's definitely some weakness in the near term, and you know you could see a pullback maybe here, uh, you know, to the 50-day moving average. Okay, that would be pretty simple. That'd be a pretty, you know, uh, uh, not nothing to be overly concerned with, and a pretty normal occurrence as long as the as long as the 50-day of the AD line stays above zero. We're going to consider this to be a pullback with an uptrend. Now, if this thing rolls over and goes below zero. All bets are off and things could change. Okay, so right now, a little bit of trouble in the near term, but overall, picture looks pretty good. All right, next chart is very similar. Okay, instead of the AD line, which allows all stocks to be counted equally, okay, it doesn't matter if you're Apple or just some really small company, they all count it equally. This is the AD volume line. So the higher the volume, the, the more influence it has. It's not a perfect indicator because you have expensive stocks like Amazon, which don't trade as much volume as they probably should, considering how expensive it is. So you have smaller companies that are that should not be as influential, end up being influential just because they're cheaper. Okay, yet yeah, you still get similar um, signals. Okay, so between the two, you know, again, you have like expansion, contraction, expansion. But as long as we get we stay above um, zero over here, the market tends to be in pretty good shape. Okay, so right now what's happening is we have a divergence forming. Um, this is still above zero, but you know close enough. Uh, when you consider that the market's been pressing higher, pressing higher, but the you know AD volume line has been declining, this is a near-term warning. You can certainly see a pullback here at least a couple days a week. You know who knows, uh, but as long as there's not a whole lot of damage over here. I'm going to consider what takes place over here to be a short-term pullback within a long-term uptrend over here. All right, here is the SP 500, um, and we have NYSE new highs, and we have NASDAQ new highs. Okay, so for a while, both of them were expanding up, 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 and new highs, the NASDAQ up, up, up. But over the last couple weeks, they've actually started to decline. So even though the market is going up, 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 up over here, several new highs last week, what you have here is a new high here, and new highs have actually been declining for three straight weeks. Boom. And NASDAQ, same thing. Boom. So even though, I mean, the NASDAQ is going up, up, up. Um, you saw that with the very first chart I posted with the NASDAQ just continuing to press higher. And yet there were less new highs last week than there were two weeks before that. Okay, so to me, I consider this to be a pretty, pretty big warning that the uptrend is not supported. That, I mean, the, the theory here is that the market goes up and there's a certain number of new highs and then the market comes down and it goes up higher and if less stocks move you know make new highs here um, that's a warning okay if the nasdaq is here and there are 100 new highs and the nasdaq goes up even higher and now there are 75 new highs there's 25 companies that didn't participate in that last run and that type of divergence builds negative energy into the stock market and eventually 
it most likely will lead to the market coming down. Okay, so it's something to watch out for. I consider this a, to be a pretty big warning. All right, next chart. Um, SP 500, this is the percentage of S&P stocks above their 20-day moving average, above their 50-day moving average, above their 20-day moving, or above their 200-day moving average. Okay, so first I wanna talk about the relationship between these two. Similar to some charts I've already shown you is that with, say, the 20 and the 50, you get expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction, okay? But longer term, as long as the number of stocks above the 200 stays you know, at a healthy level above 50%, I consider with the, this to be a pullback within an uptrend as long as this stays above 50%, okay? So this is like your, this is like your shorter and intermediate term, but this is your overall health, okay? So what I see right now happening is, you know, um, and divergences, which I've already talked about, so I'm not gonna repeat them here. So what I see here is the market's pressing higher, okay? We have a little bit of a divergence here, Okay, so markets here, and we have close to 90% of stocks above their 20-day moving average, and then the market is, you know, over here, the market's, you know, nearly, you know, 150, 200 points higher, and yet now over here, only 85% of stocks were above their 20-day um, 20, 20 moving average, okay? Less participation, less stocks, less stocks participated in this move up here, okay? Now we're in a situation where it's 52%. Okay, there's a number right there. So only half of stocks, even though the even though the S&P has been relentlessly moving up above all key moving averages, the number of stocks that have maintained this moving average has declined by quite a bit. Okay, so I consider this to be a short-term warning, but as long as this stays above 50%, I'm going to consider this to be short-term warning. You know, a short-term pullback within a longer-term uptrend. Uptrend. So far, we haven't gotten a pullback. But if this over here continues, we're gonna get some sort of a pullback here, okay? And if we do get a pullback here, as long as this stays elevated, this is gonna get bought and we're gonna go back to new highs. Now, if this drops off, then, you know, then the market be in for a, a bigger correction. The counter argument to this is that the S&P doesn't matter as much. So a lot of oil stocks there, financials, REITs, stocks that aren't really leading the economy right now and it's like not as tech heavy as it should be so maybe this indicate maybe the indicator here isn't as potent as it should be maybe i shouldn't give be giving it the same weight that i've given it in the past it's something to consider it's a legit argument i'm going to keep an eye on it all right one more here all right this is the sp500 versus the nasdaq summation index summation index is related to the advanced decline line um, so divergences tend to be pretty powerful here. Okay, so you have divergence here and divergence here. Okay, market pushed up a little bit higher here and then you got another divergence here and of course the market came down hard. You have a divergence here. Okay, and then the market came down hard. You have divergence here and then the market came down hard. The fact that it came down that hard is irrelevant. Um, just happened to be timing wise, but you can see that, you know, it seems like once, twice a year, you get a divergence where the market presses higher, the summation index puts in a lower high, a couple months later, then the market corrects. Sometimes it's a short term correction that lasts a month, sometimes it's a bigger correction that lasts a couple months, but it, it tends to lead to a correction. So we have that forming right now. Okay, market's pressing up, 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 summation index going down, down, down. Even just recently when you know it tried to curl up over here, but it immediately went down and the market just kind of kept pressing higher. So I consider this to be a pretty big warning <clears throat> also. All right. So the indexes are doing well overall. There's no questioning the trend, but but several measures of the market's internal internal health suggest support for the uptrend is declining. The 80 line the AD volume lines, uh, lines, they're declining. Um, new highs have been trending lower this entire month. The percentage of stocks above key moving averages is falling. And the NASDAQ summation index um, is negatively diverging from the NASDAQ. So in my opinion, you should be long right now because the trend is up and you, you just need to be long and you need to make as much money as you can when the market is doing well. But given these warnings, stops need to be in place and we need to be a little bit more careful initiating new positions, okay? Because it looks like if, 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 if breath continues the way it is, we're probably gonna get a pullback really, really soon. 
All right. So thanks for listening. Come check us out at Lever Brothers, where we offer market analysis and trading ideas to the financial community. Um, also check out my free masterclass in trading at the link below. All right. See you next time.